Zoom. It's one of the most popular video conferencing software out there. But can you run webinars on it? And is it any good? Let's find out. With Zoom webinars, you can host only live events. And these events can happen at a one-time basis or at a recurring basis. The recurring webinars can occur daily, weekly, or monthly. And the scheduling here is quite flexible. So that's a good thing. When you're setting up the webinar, by default, the video option for hosts and panelists is off. So make sure to turn those on. Also enable the Q&A and recording. So the webinar would be automatically recorded and stored into your own computer or into the Zoom mm -hmm. A big downside for Zoom webinars is that the host and all the attendees have to download and install the Zoom software, even just to join the webinar. This is definitely going to decrease your webinar attendance rate because of this barrier. There's very little customization that you can do on the webinar registration page. First, you can add your own logo to the page and you can uh, slightly change the theme colors. You can choose a different uh, color theme and you can add a post webinar survey that uh, will would launch after the webinar but it's not integrated into zoom you would have to provide a separate url that the attendees would be taken to after the webinar you can't change the registration page layout you cannot add a product image or a video and you can't even embed the registration form uh, to your own landing page so basically, the only thing you can do here is add this logo and change the color of this button. And that's it. So we are already starting to see that Zoom webinars are not really made for marketing purposes. There are a couple of upsides here, actually. I like it that I can create a custom tracking link for different sources. For example, I can create a link for Facebook and for my email list and see which one converts registrations better. Another decent feature on Zoom webinars is that you can add custom questions to the webinar registration form. So uh, you can add a short answer, a single choice answer, or a multiple choice answer. When people register for your webinar, they will receive this registration confirmation email. And if you look at it, it just focuses on how to join the webinar. It gives a little option to cancel but it's not focusing at all on making the webinar attractive to maximize the attendance rate. At least there's the add to calendar buttons, which help to increase the attendance rate a little bit. The next category of emails are the webinar reminder emails, which you can send an hour, a day, and a week before the webinar starts. Again, the webinar reminder emails are very much focused on instructions, how to join and how to dial in to the webinar. And you can only add a small text snippet at the end of the reminder email. So these webinar reminder emails are horrible because they focus very much on how to download and install and join or join with phone and how to do all those steps just to join the webinar. And it's forgetting about communicating the value of the webinar for the attendee. Why should they join? Why should they be interested in the webinar? They are completely forgetting that. And that's why the reminder emails are horrible for maximizing your attendance rate. The purpose of the webinar reminder emails should be communicating the value of the webinar and maximizing the attendance rate. The final category of emails are the webinar follow-up emails, which serve two main purposes. First, to share the webinar replay with the attendees who couldn't attend the webinar. And second, to create a very clear call to action to encourage the attendees to make the purchase. The follow-up emails on Zoom webinars do none of that. You cannot automatically include the webinar replay and you can't really design a clear call to action to those emails. This is just an email to say thanks for attending. One good thing, however, is that you can... ...the ones who didn't attend. So that's a small upside. Welcome to the Zoom webinars live room. And perhaps the best thing about it is that you're probably already familiar with Zoom meetings and the interface is very much the same. 
The presentation tools on Zoom webinars are quite outdated. There is no way to inject a slideshow directly into the platform. Instead, you would have to run the PowerPoint on your computer locally and share your screen. The same thing applies if you want to share a video. This is not ideal because it decreases the text quality on the slides depending on your and your attendees connection quality. Most modern webinar software today actually have the slide upload feature and slide controls right inside the webinar room for the host. Stick around until the end of the video and I'll show you some better and cheaper alternatives to Zoom webinars. To be fair, there is one decent presentation tool on Zoom webinars and that is the annotate feature that you're already probably familiar from Zoom meetings. Uh, this is a quite rich toolbox for annotating and drawing. It's essentially a whiteboard tool and you can draw and make stamps and stuff like that. It's, uh, it's pretty useful if you want to emphasize something on the slides for your attendees, just like that. The chat works pretty much the same way as in Zoom meetings. You can also choose who can your attendees chat with. But there are also some interesting audience interaction features that are not present in Zoom meetings. So let's go through them. First, there are the polls. The polls can be configured during the webinar setup and launched during the live webinar. After all the attendees are done answering the poll, the host can just end the poll and share the results with the attendees so everyone can see the results. During your webinar, your attendees can ask questions and the questions will be gathered under the Q&A tab right here. Other attendees can actually upvote on questions to signal which questions they want answered to the most. At the end of the webinar, the host can choose the most popular questions and answer them live. For the less popular questions, the host or the co-host can click type answer to provide a written answer. After you're done with answering the question live, you can click on done for the question and it will move to the answered tab on the Q&A. To be honest, the Q&A feature is probably the best uh, feature on Zoom webinars in the live room. As you might expect, all the attendees in the live webinar room are muted by default. As a host, you can allow to talk for any attendee so they can share their story or their testimonial using the microphone. Just like this. If they're done sharing their story, you can just ask to unmute. One huge downside for Zoom webinars is that there are no interactive offers to help you with sales inside the webinar. This is a strong sign that Zoom webinars are not built for marketing and sales purposes. It's just not built for it. You can save the webinar recording locally inside your computer or you can share it to the cloud using the Zoom cloud. If you've chosen to upload the webinar recording in the cloud, you can get the shareable replay link. However, it won't be shared by default with your uh, webinar attendees in the follow-up email. The webinar replay is essentially just the video recording file that's uh, played back. So the polls and the Q&A and all the interactions that happened during the live webinar will not be recorded. Even if you do send the webinar recording link to your attendees, they can't actually ask their own questions during the webinar replay. The only thing they can do is play, pause and change the speed. Most modern webinar software today have a clear and insightful webinar analytics dashboard, which gives you a really clear overview of the webinar funnel conversions, uh, the attendees and the attendance statistics. Basically, the most important information would be displayed on a dashboard. But on Zoom webinars, it's different. You can only generate a CSV reports that you can download and open in an Excel spreadsheet and analyze. Let's take a look at all the reports. The registration report is basically the email list of everyone who registered for your webinar. The attendee report is a more detailed data about the people who attended your webinar. When did they join? When did they leave? How long were they active? And which country did they join from? The performance report is actually quite basic. It's basically the conversions of how many registered and how many attended and how many questions were asked during the webinar. The poll report is the, uh, which uh, poll answers did each attendee uh, answer with 
And the Q&A report is basically which questions did each attendee ask so you can uh, follow up with them afterwards. Contrary to popular belief, Zoom webinars is not actually that cheap at all. First off, you need to get the Zoom Pro plan, which is $14.99 per month. This also gets you the Zoom meetings without a 40-minute time limit. On top of that, you will also need the Zoom video webinars add-on, which is another $40 per month. So the absolute minimum for Zoom webinars is $55 per month, and this only gets you the live webinars feature. Also, this gets you up to 100 attendees and only one host. You can scale that up, but it's gonna cost you a lot. Also, there is no trial for Zoom webinars. So, to conclude, Zoom webinars is great for one thing. If you want to host in-house webinars to your own employees, you're not looking to make any sales, you don't want to market anything, you just want to broadcast information to a large audience, and you want to run polls and take questions in a Q&A format at the end of the webinar. And you're already using Zoom for meetings, so you're familiar with the interface. Only in that case, I can recommend Zoom for webinars for you. If your goal is to promote a product or an online course or coaching, then with Zoom webinars, your attendees are going to experience some significant roadblocks. For example, downloading and installing a separate software just to join the webinar. The webinar registration page is very frigid, unattractive, and you can't showcase your product or your value proposition visually. The webinar reminder emails don't make your webinar look attractive at all, so they do a really bad job at maximizing the attendance rate of your webinar. The live webinar audience interaction tools don't include the active offers for making the sale during the webinar. The webinar follow-up email does not include the webinar replay, so you would lose a portion of your uh, registrants who would still want to attend the webinar and watch the webinar contents, but they don't have this opportunity. And on top of it all, Zoom webinars are actually priced quite heavily, especially if you want to scale up in the future. But what are some alternatives to Zoom webinars? The first alternative that I can recommend is Webinar Jam. Webinar Jam is one of the most popular webinar software out there, and they greatly focus on the marketing features such as the landing page conversion optimization and audience interaction tools. One of the great features for Webinar Jam is that you can launch an offer live during the webinar to all your attendees, especially at the high point when your attendees are ready to buy. The second one is Big Marker, which is one of the most diverse webinar software out there. Big Marker is basically the jack of all trades of webinar software. It has so many different types of webinars, like automated webinars, you can run uh, evergreen webinars, on-demand webinars, you can also run live streams to Facebook or YouTube. It's really diverse in that sense. One of the features I like the most about Big Marker is that you can set up polls and offers and Q&A even inside the webinar replay, which will be actually sent to your attendees automatically after the webinar. So that means that your webinar attendees who couldn't attend it live but are watching the replay can also participate, they can uh, uh, participate in the polls, they can uh, ask their own questions and you can launch offers to them so they can uh, purchase even during the webinar replay. You can also take it to the next level and create an automated webinar using the automated webinar timeline builder. So you can exactly time at what moment does the polls launch, what moment does the offer launch, and uh, so on. So you can exactly craft a perfect webinar experience for your attendees. And this will ultimately immensely increase your webinar sales. So if you want to host marketing or sales webinars, Go with Webinar Jam or Big Marker. These are some of the best webinar software out there. Use the link in the description to get a trial for Webinar Jam or for Big Marker. These are some of the best webinar software out there. Use the links in the description. Thank you for watching.